Hi, we're going to take a couple of minutes and look at how to manage your containers on the page so you can achieve the layout you're looking for. And there are some quirks that you can expect to see sometimes with uh, HTML and CSS. We're going to address those as well. Uh, let's start by creating a new file, a new HTML file in Dreamweaver by clicking File, New, then HTML, Create. Uh, we should get a nice blank page. You should probably switch to split mode, um, which will make it easier to see what's going on in, in the background while we play around with the WYSIWYG editor. Um, first thing we want to do is insert our wrapper tag. And to do that, we go to Layout Objects, Div Tag. We'll assign it a class of wrapper. And we'll create new CSS to define the attributes of this wrapper. Um, just click uh, class, wrapper, this document only for now, so click OK. Uh, what we want to do is make sure that the container for the wrapper is a specific size, so we're going to give it a size of 960 pixels. And we're also going to make it centered on our page uh, for the purposes of this demo. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to uncheck this box for margin and we're going to assign auto to the right margin and auto to the left margin. Uh, we have enough information to start with so we'll click apply and OK and because this is CSS we can change it at any time so we'll click OK there uh, and we have the beginnings of a new document next order of business we want to save it so go to file uh, save as make sure you save it in a folder and give it a file name that makes sense so box exercise there we go now we can continue uh, we have one container here which is going to be the master container that will contain all our other boxes as you can see by selecting it uh, the code is highlighted here. The proper area is highlighted here in the tree. And over here on the right, you may want to at this point turn on your CSS styles panel. And you can, you can view two different ways. One is to view the entire CSS style sheet and all its classes and IDs. Uh, right now we only have one called wrapper or you can look at the current selection and see what the attributes are um, if you move these up and down you can play around with how things are laid out so you can see more or less um, if we view all it allows us to select the classes a bit more easily once we uh, start adding stuff because you also have the properties for your selection available here as well. Um, what I'm going to do next is change this. So you're not committed, you know, once the CSS box is closed, you can still change things. So just select it, make sure it's chosen. And we're going to add a new property. And if you're not really sure what the CSS tag is called, you can always click the drop down and you'll get a list of every single. CSS attribute that can be applied to this. In this case, I want to assign a border. And the attributes for border are thickness, um, color, and type. So I can say two pixel border, solid, and we'll make it red. Press enter. And now if I deselect here, you see that my container has a red outline around it. Uh, I'm going to proceed to add some more boxes inside here. I can delete this placeholder text at this point. And you see that once that content is gone, it can get really tight in here. So it's always a good idea to keep track of where things are here in your code. I'm going to insert a layout object, div tag. This one is going to be box one. Try to be a bit more descriptive with your class assignments. That way it'll make it a bit more obvious when you look at your CSS, what's being affected. Uh, I'll create a new CSS rule for box one and this document only. OK. 
OK. Uh, this box we're going to change. We're going to make it 300 pixels. We're going to assign it a margin of 10 pixels all around. And we're also going to assign the border now instead of doing it later. If we can just click the border here on the left. And we'll choose, these are all the different styles available. We're going to choose this one, we're going to choose dotted. And we're going to choose a thin one. And the color will be orange. Click OK. OK. And there's our new box in our container. Uh, at this point, you can switch to live view just to see what's going on. There it is. So far, so good. Now, if we want to change the positioning of this box, the options available to us are fairly limited with CSS. Right now, you can see there are margins. Um, but let's say I want to move this a bit to the right. That means I have to increase the margin on the left. To do that, I would add a property margin left. And again, if you don't remember the exact terminology or syntax, you can always find it in the drop down here. And I'm going to change margin left to 25 pixels. And you can see that it bumped it over just a little bit. I'll do it again, change it to 50, just to exaggerate the effect. And you can see what happens. Now these margins are invisible, but they do affect the positioning. If I want to add an additional box, let's see what happens. Now I try to click outside this area, but Dreamweaver is not letting me. It's one of those things in Dreamweaver that are a little cumbersome to work with. So you may have to use your keyboard and keep an eye out over here in your code to where the cursor goes, or you can just copy and paste your code, which tends to be a lot faster. For those of you who are intimidated by code, there's a good reason for playing around with it more often. So now if we refresh, we'll see the exact duplicate container goes in there. What we can do though is change the class. So now this is box two. Refresh. And because we've changed the class that was assigned to it and no class has been defined, the box reverts back to its default settings, which is 100% width, no margins, no nothing. So what we want to do is create a new CSS entry for this particular box. And to do that, you could just right click in the area here, click on new, and it'll trigger the CSS rule box. This one we'll call box two, make sure it matches the class that you've already changed there. Click OK. This box will make it again 300 pixels. <clears throat> uh, we'll change the margin to 10 all around. Border, we're going to change this one to dotted as well. Width will make this thin, and color will make this one a bit different. We'll make it a uh, bright green so it stands out. Click apply and here because we've already assigned the class to this container we can see the, the changes immediately when we click apply and we see that it's now got its own thing going. Click OK. Now how do we get this box to appear next to that box? Well this is where the float attribute comes in and it can be a little intimidating to play with this float attribute for layouts. So we're going to play around with that next. Tune into the next video and you'll see how to use floating to assign the order in which your boxes will be laid out.